reporter Carl Reiner here at LaGuardia Airport, awaiting the arrival of a plane load of eminent visitors. Among them, the distinguished authority and producer-director of great European motion picture masterpieces. And here he comes now, Professor Kurt von Close-Up. Hello there. Good evening, Professor. How are you? I guess all of us realize that your claim to fame has come because of the great, sensitive, delicate films, the classic films that you have made. Oh, yes, I've made that, but I've also made uh, other kinds, you know. I, I was the first one to make the big spectacle. The spectacle? I didn't the know that. The spectacular one. I was the first one to use a million experts. A million experts? One million experts. No actors, just experts all over the place. <laughs> when I used a million experts in one picture. This picture, I'm telling you, it was... Uh, we built two whole castles for that. And we had charges of men together with the spears. And the moats and, and, and the door bridges were let down. And millions of men just crashing and crashing around with battle axes and swinging and the trumpets playing. It was spectacular. Now, what was the name of that picture, Doctor? Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Doctor, I just read the, the, the recent book you wrote, and I particularly enjoyed the chapter you had on naturalism and realism in film. Yes, that's very true. You need realism in, in, if, if you want the people to believe you're real. But I thought I was a realist. I, I, I thought I was a realist, but I, I had an actor once. He was a stickler for realism. He was more stickler learned than I was. Really? <laughs> he was a real stickler. He wanted realism. I said, well, listen, we're making the picture. It's about an African... It's a fairy, you know, and in the picture you have a fight with a, with a tiger, so we get a nice tame tiger, and you know, and, uh, and your friend, he's, no, no, I want the real thing. I cannot act, I cannot perform unless I have the real thing. And I couldn't argue with him because he was a great star, so, I mean, after all, so we went to, went to Africa, and we got, we got a real jungle, and we got a real native, and we got a real tiger, and we had a real funeral. Oh. <laughs> That's a great act. Sorry to hear that, Doctor. Doctor, since you're the world's foremost authority on motion picture making, perhaps you can explain something to our audience here. We all know that motion picture making is based on many other forms. They have taken the oral, that is, the, the sound quality of radio, and added to it the visual and dramatic quality of the dramatic theater. In addition, uh, motion pictures have developed qualities peculiar to the industry itself, such as scope, plasticity, and many multi-dimensional multi aspects, thus establishing an entire new art form. Would you care to comment on that, Doctor? No, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> uh, doctor, no, I don't need it. No, actually. Well, uh, doctor, I, I understand. I understand that you have found in your time many new and great personalities. You have discovered many great talents, new talents. Oh, once I was, you know, once I was in my room, you know, on the twelfth story, twelfth story up. Well, you know, the traffic noises and everything that was down down, down below, with the buses and everything, and all of a sudden, curtain through that was a voice clear as a bell. <coughs> Clear as a bell, I heard this voice. It was something that came out of it. Well, a melon, melon. Well, a melon, melon. Melon, melon, melon. Oh, now, I heard that voice. I ran right over to the window. I looked down and I said, You, what's your name? Oh, and he said, My name is Joe Militsky. <laughs> Joe Militsky, how much is two slices of warm melon? <laughs> well, I got right up here. What's delicious? <laughs> That must have been very exciting. Doctor, I understand that you've come to America now to film some of the classics. I understand Shakespeare in particular. Oh, yes. I'm, I, I came here when I finished the, I finished the picture. Oh, you had finished Oh, yes. I finished Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. We had two terrible actors there, though. There was, they could, we took almost 40 takes on, on the balcony scene alone. When I tried to get him into it, you know, I tried to... When I showed him, I, I showed him how to play. I said, now, when you call down to you, when you call up to Juliet, you say, you should say, Juliet! And they couldn't get it, you know, and finally we got it. The picture cost seven million dollars. What a flop. Oh. <laughs> 